You know, I think there are many challenges that actors face and, you know, they really have my respect for really pursuing a, a career, which is, you know, really challenging and demanding. Uh, I think it demands that you've got to be really committed to your craft and to wanting to be actors. I don't think it's a career for the faint-hearted. I don't know that the challenges have necessarily changed over the years. I think, you know, even if you reference, you know, what the chaps were saying 30 years ago, actually it's finding those jobs and securing them. It's a, an industry that actually you have to have a job in order to, to you know, hone your craft or to practice your craft. No other industry does that. You can do that without those means. So I think it's identifying ways of, of finding work uh, and I, I think where we're at now is the industry is changing so much that that might be recording a voiceover in your spare room as a means to pay your bills one week and then potentially doing an advert the following week, uh, you know, a guest step of a soap the following week, uh, two or three months, you know, in rep if you can find that still in existence somewhere. So I think it's finding the work uh, really is one of the biggest challenges and, and looking at a way to survive as an actor and realizing that acting isn't just an episode on, on television or a part in a play, that it could be voicing a video game. It is a job interview when you meet actors and I think sometimes it all gets wrapped up in the, oh, are they gonna think I'm a good actor or a bad actor? Actually, for many of our directors, it's if I'm stuck doing a night shoot with this person for 14 hours, are they going to be the kind of person at the end of the day that is going to be keeping everybody going? Are they the sort of person I'm going to want to go for a drink with at the end of the day? So I think it's actually still back to the relevant skills of a job interview. Are you the kind of team player that everybody would want to work with? Because, you know, this business is 12 to 14 hours a day out in the cold. And it's, yeah, it's having that personality that people want to to work with so I suppose that that's another piece of advice I have is when actors come into an audition room it's not trying to preempt what somebody might be looking for but to actually show us who you are because it's that interesting personality that is as appealing as the talent of the actor. Talent is talent wherever you might find it and I think we're almost coming full circle where I, you know, have a huge respect for drama schools. But the reality is that, you know, some really talented young actors can't afford £10,000, £15,000 a year in tuition fees, plus the living expenses being in London, no matter how much they'd love to. So it's finding other means as to where you can source new talents. So I think there is a bit of a resurgence in this idea of the theatre workshop, which, you know, if you go back to the Joan Littlewood kind of days is, you know, your alternative methods of training anyway. And I think especially in the North, I've noticed is these kind of you know, evening workshop, weekend workshops that allow people the ability, I suppose if you take it back to the idea of the poor school, um, the ability to earn a living and the realities of earning a living and supporting a family potentially so it's yeah it's finding where these workshops are and I actually interestingly had a look at, at our last six castings for new regulars and they've all come through that method of training so for example last night I was over in Media City watching an actor's workshop part-time as a means to just seek and you know find new talent so I think our job is to find new places to find actors rather than just the traditional methods to make sure that we're not missing people. Casting directors, agents, producers, directors are much more accessible than they used to be. You know, back in the day it was you send hard copy letters and hope that it would arrive on the desk. Actually now, more often than not, you can get access to a casting director's email. You can follow a director on Twitter or Instagram. So actually people are much more accessible. I think it's realizing that having a reason to get in touch with somebody rather than a generic email saying I'd like to be considered for work because you know you get hundreds of those every week what is it that makes you different why are you writing and I think it's about when you make these very specific approaches that you're doing just that in the content of you know your material your covering letter your CV um, that you're saying why you'd be right for the programs that we're working on I think where actors let themselves down is that they will generically send bulk emails 
in the hope that some some of it will stick or, or be picked up. Actually, you can read those correspondence and realize that it is exactly that. You're more inclined to read somebody that's written to you on a personal level, identified what it is that you're looking for or your tastes and, you know, changed what it is to suit you. That's interesting. agencies or to be an agent is almost becoming as popular as it is to be an actor. I think it's seen as a glamorous job, um, one which for some people does pay off and for others it doesn't. So I think it's about doing your research and knowing that actually the agent that you're with is a reputable one and has access to, to stuff that you don't, I guess. Otherwise you may as well be doing it yourself. I, we work with and I have employed and I do employ people that are unrepresented. Um, and I will continue to do so because, as I said earlier, talent is talent wherever you find it. Personally, I'm a massive fan of actor co-ops because I think it's a very interesting place where you have a hand in your own career whilst understanding the nature of the industry at any one time. So actors are very quick to blame um, agents when they don't get work. I think they're very quick to blame not having the right headshots or, you know, there's always a reason as to why they're not being seen for or getting work. And I think the reality is there's just not a lot of work out there for the amount of people that are wanting to follow this as a career. The ability to make money from your voice is certainly the growth that I've seen over the last maybe 10 years. I know actor friends of mine that have literally turned their spare box rooms into soundproof recording studios because actually a job a day is coming in to do voiceovers now whether that's a voiceover for online golfing or you know an online gambling site or a window company that piece of work can be done from the home pays them a, a weekly a daily income that then allows them to to dash off in the afternoon and you know go to that interview over in manchester or in london where i see the industry grow, going more is actors creating their own work as well there's one actor who emails me every week and I thought it was a very interesting idea. They'd made a series of 30 second mini soap episodes. So it were featured this character that they were portraying and each mini 30 second episode was then being chatted up over the bar by somebody else. But that dropped into my inbox every Friday and I actually became uh, excited to see what happened next. So they were creating their own work as a means to, to, you know, to gather interest from directors, casting, and it worked for them. You know, suddenly we became the viewer and they were providing us with content that we wanted. The fringe scene now, particularly in London and the bigger cities, your Birmingham's, your Manchester, your Liverpool's, there are so many venues that are detached from the world of amateur dramatics, but are offering performers the opportunity to gain experience on stage uh, and I love going to those fringe venues as again as a means to see not only new acting talent but new writing talent and it's interesting that the people that you saw in those you know theatre above a pubs that were a, a bunch of graduates graduating from drama school five years ago that didn't have work were creating their own work actually now you sit and go through those programs and see they're so and so working at the royal exchange so and so working at the national so and so in this tv program so i think it's about actors coming together to create as they always have done their own companies and finding those fringe venues I think it's what can you do that nobody else is doing and don't presume that you're working, you're the hardest working actor out there. It's like when people say to me, do I need to learn the lines to come into the audition? I go, that's completely down to you. I don't judge somebody on learning their lines or not. But if you don't, the person after you will have done. So it's always looking at an opportunity that's presented to you and going, what could I do that maybe somebody else won't have done. You know, if you've emailed 10 agents on a Monday morning seeking representation, somebody will have done 20. So I think it's really looking at how you can stretch your own skills and being really proactive if you want to stay in this career, because it isn't for somebody who's faint hearted or who thinks they'd like to try it, you know, give it a try and see how they get on. You've got to be absolutely dedicated and be ready, you know, to be out of work for a long period of time and be okay with that. <laughs>